Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I just got home from Paris a couple of days ago and the first video I wanted to sit down and film is my Paris haul. I'm especially excited about today's video because I got a couple of things that were more splurge purchases that have been sitting on my wish list for a while. I found a couple of really amazing secondhand items that I'm so excited about because secondhand shopping in Europe is a very, very different experience to Sydney. And there are also a couple of boutique brands that I discovered while in Paris that I've just fallen in love with. Most of the pieces I'm showing are not solely available in Paris or in Europe, but they are actually available around the world and online as well. I just don't necessarily have access to it here in Sydney. So whenever possible and I can find it online, I'll try to link the pieces down below as well as anything that I might be wearing. These are the first two pieces I want to share with you and both of these pieces are from the French brand Sir. This is quite a popular brand because in Paris, every 10 or 15 minutes I walked, I feel like I saw one of their boutiques. So they are quite popular, it seems, in Paris. I'm gonna start by talking about the vest because this was one of the first things that caught my eye in the store. If you've seen some of my past videos, you'll know that I really like vests. I find them so versatile, so wearable, the perfect piece to do a little bit of layering in warmer weather, but also in winter to put underneath a coat or a blazer as well. I like this one because it's this really beautiful brown color. It's got a lot of texture to it, which you might be able to see in the close-ups. And it just felt like a piece that could really bring texture and elevate any outfit. What I find sometimes in a lot of my local stores is that there are a lot of pieces in bright colors um, and loud prints and things like that. But trying to find something that has a beautiful texture is a lot harder. So when I came across this, I just immediately knew this was something that I could get so much wear from in my wardrobe. What I really like about these boutique French brands is that they pay a lot of attention to detail. So of course the texture and material, but I also really like the use of hardware. It's this very kind of matte, dull brass material that I feel like suits this piece perfectly. It's got the front pockets here, which are a very good size, so it actually has some function, and then just one little one on the chest. The way that I will style this most of the time is when I'm wearing very flat textures, adding this piece into the look will definitely make it feel a lot more luxurious in the outfit. The other item I purchased from Sir is this shirt that I'm wearing. I was incredibly drawn to this shirt because on one hand, it's very neutral, very wearable with the gray and the khaki. But on the other hand, it just felt like such a fresh and beautiful pairing of color that I don't feel like I've seen before. So after looking at it again and again and again, I did decide to pick it up. It's more of an oversized style of shirt made from a cotton poplin material. I don't find the shape to be too overwhelming, but it is definitely more of a loose oversized fit. I'm always on the lookout for very small details that can elevate a piece. And something else I was drawn to is the black contrast stitching. It's on the cuff, it's on the collar, as well as the pocket. It's just a very small detail that makes this piece look like it's just very good quality, which it is. I'm so happy with these two pieces from Sir. And if I was to describe their brand in a very simple way, I would say they're very sophisticated. They work off a very neutral color palette. And when they use color, the colors are not very bright. They tend to be quite earthy. At least that's what I've noticed in their latest seasons. You'll see later on that I do sometimes gravitate towards pieces that feel a bit more vibrant and maybe a little bit more youthful as well. Whereas Sir is definitely more elegant, sophisticated, um, and luxurious. I popped into Longchamp while I was in Gallery Lafayette and I wanted to buy my friend a bit of a souvenir slash present. I saw this and thought it was a very cute gift ID and I actually got myself one as well because it's my best friend and we often have matching things over the you know decade we've known each other. So I thought we would do like matching little um, Longchamp bags as well. I thought this would be a good gift ID because it's a cute little bag that you can put your wallet, your phone, your keys in to run out for some errands. I know she's a fan of mini bags, so I thought this would be perfect. But on the other hand, this can definitely also be just a makeup pouch um, for travel or for every day. You can put this into a bigger bag as your makeup bag. And I felt like there were a lot of options you could use this for and therefore a good gift idea. I also really like this gray color. I feel like I don't see this color as often as I do the navy. Um, which I see a lot. And the detail I was really drawn to here is that pop of green. 
It's really the smallest things like that, like what I was saying about the clothing, that makes me feel drawn to a piece. And the green was definitely the thing that made me like this little bag. For my own little bag, I just want to show you that if you have the larger iPhone, so the Pro Max, it easily fits into here as well as a card holder, keys, maybe a lipstick. So it does fit quite a lot, all the essentials. If I just wanted a very simple kind of top handle bag on a casual day out. This is just in my own personal opinion, but even though it's just a simple nylon bag, there is something that feels quite luxurious about the Longchamp kind of handle and tab here. And I do get that luxurious feel, even though the bag itself is a very simple style. Since we're on the topic of accessories, I also want to share with you two purchases I made in Italy. Both accessories and both things that I had on my wish list before going to Europe. The first item is this Bottega Veneta cassette bag. I knew I wanted this, but I didn't really know which color combination until I was in store. When I was in store, I saw a lot of the ones I had already seen before. So the ones with the grain leather, and I could never decide which one because while they were all nice, there was nothing necessarily jumping out at me. But when I saw this paper leather texture, I immediately knew this was the one. I really like the slightly crinkled look of it because I feel like it emphasizes this type of pattern on the bag a little bit more. It also has a slightly shiny finish that I always love. I mean, I love any kind of texture. I, I talk about it too much, but any kind of texture is always a bonus for me. And this type of shiny finish, I was really drawn to. Compared to the regular flat cassette bags. It also has a logo on the strap. A logo is definitely not everyone's cup of tea, but there is something about this logo that I quite like. It's just a triangle, and I know that there is no one in my life that will really know what this triangle is. I think if you're into fashion, you might, but in my life, in my surrounding, this is not something you'll recognize. And it's just a nice little kind of hardware accent that as to an outfit, in my opinion. This bag, I believe, may be from the men's collection, but it's pretty much the exact same as the flat cassette bags, except that it's got the buckle, as well as this type of texture. I've been using this bag for the last two and a half weeks, and it's just way too soon for me to even give a first impressions review. So I'll be doing a review in about two and a half, three weeks in my updated bag collection video that's coming soon. Until then, I'll just be using this bag, getting the most wear that I can from it, and I'll be able to give you a proper review then. The other item that was on my wish list for Europe was a pair of loafers from Todd's. So naturally, because Todd's is Italian, I went to an outlet mall near Florence to purchase these shoes. The outlet was selling them for about half of the original price, and they were doing a promotion that day where if you bought a pair of loafers, you got any bag in the store for 50% off the sale price. So my mum already was looking at an orange bag, I was looking at these shoes, so it really worked out very perfectly that day. Let's talk about the actual loafer now. I chose my one out in the brown suede. It's got some gold hardware on it, but the gold is more of a brush gold and it's not very shiny at all. I chose a pair that had a slightly thicker sole, as opposed to something that was very, very flat. These are really comfortable shoes. I started wearing them almost immediately, and the first time I wore it was on a day trip. I think I went... I think it was a 10 hour day, I did a lot of walking, and I didn't have a single blister. The previous day, I kind of tried them on, and I knew immediately that this shoe was going to be comfortable, but the fact that I could wear them immediately, I think, um, just shows how comfortable this suede loafer is. The suede material is softer than a traditional leather, so it definitely helps with the comfort. But what is also really good about this shoe for me is that it's more on the wide side. I don't find it to be too narrow, as many shoes can be. So if you have wider feet, I feel like this style of loafer or Todd's loafers like this could work really well. I think I'll end up saying this about a lot of these things, but this was one of my favorite purchases from Europe. I've got two jackets over here, which were previously sitting on the rack, which I purchased pre-loved in Paris. So vintage shopping and pre-loved shopping in Paris, I think is so incredibly inspiring um, and there is just so much to choose from especially if i compare it to what i have access to here in sydney this place i just remembered i didn't actually purchase in paris i got it in a town called annecy in france the moment i saw this blazer i just tried it on and it was such a snap quick decision to purchase it because it was really the perfect piece 
I love all the colors on this blazer. It's red, but it's got the yellow, um, some pops of purple and blue in it. And the color and material of it, I think is so pretty. This collarless design reminds me of a totem blazer that I have once tried. I really love that blazer, but it was too big. When I returned it to exchange it for my size, it was sold out. So gave up on that. But this collar design just really reminded me of that blazer. The sizing also felt really perfect for what I like in a blazer. It's loose, it's oversized, but the sleeves, they fit really well, which is always a criteria for me. I'm sure that if you're a local, you know where to look, you went to some concept stores or smaller stores, you'll be able to get it for a better price than I did. But I paid 30 euros for it and honestly, I was pretty happy. This next item also feels like an incredibly special purchase because it's my first ever leather jacket. This one I got actually in the pre-love section at Printom. So what I found in Paris was that all of the larger department stores, they have a pre-love floor or section. And it's usually very curated, of course, but there is actually quite a large selection to choose from. This item is pre-loved. I'm not sure if it's vintage or not, but it is from Chloe. What I was really drawn to in this jacket probably won't surprise you too much, but I like the looser shape of this jacket. With a lot of leather jackets, I find that there's not a lot of width through the arms. So between the shoulder and the armpit especially, I like there to be a bit of room because this is an area that tends to feel a bit uncomfortable for me if it's too fitted. With this jacket, the shoulder is ever so slightly dropped and it's also got this wider sleeve that I felt like just worked really well and was a lot more comfortable. This jacket doesn't have hardware and I have nothing against hardware on the leather jacket, but I also feel like the lack of hardware makes it a little bit more easy to wear and maybe a little bit more polished as well. Some other features of this jacket is that it's got a colorless design it's got a crop shape and then also crop sleeves. I feel like with these features, I can see myself wearing it spring, autumn in Australia, but also winter. And it wasn't going to be like a super heavy jacket that I could only pull out late autumn, winter. Another brand that I discovered is Sassoon. So this is a brand that I have occasionally shopped from online, but it's always a completely new experience to be able to see their whole collection together and to feel all the fabrics and get a feel for the quality overall. So, Sassoon. Sassoon reminds me a bit of Cezanne, not just in the name, but in the general style of pieces that they do. There are a lot of cardigans that I saw. There's a lot of really fun colors right now, which is similar to what Cezanne is doing. But Sassoon for me feels a bit more bohemian, maybe a bit more free-spirited in the feel of the collection, whereas Cezanne I feel like has a lot of staple pieces and then they also have some louder, trendier pieces mixed in, but it feels more balanced and all-encompassing. When I was shopping, I feel like Sassoon was often placed near the Sir counter. They were often very close together. These two brands both give me the kind of French girl aesthetic, but they could not be more different in that Sassoon feels much younger, more playful, um, and Sir feels a lot more sophisticated and neutral. Let's start by talking about this denim jacket, which I also didn't purchase in Paris. I purchased it in Annecy, but I mean, I could have purchased it in Paris. It was everywhere. It's a denim crop jacket. It's got these big balloon sleeves and it's got the orange kind of embroidery throughout the piece. Looking at the lining, I'm just kind of remembering that Sassoon seems to have more of a 60s, 70s kind of influence compared to Cezanne and Sir. This is exactly the kind of purchase that I wanted to make in Europe. It's a very unique jacket that I just don't think I'll find here in Sydney. But at the same time, it is still a denim jacket and it does feel like my style and something I would wear on a very casual weekend. It's got a bit of a structure to it because it's kind of like a quilted denim jacket, but it's also not very heavy, which I like because again, I'm gonna say it all the time, Sydney weather means that I don't need a lot of super thick jackets. This is a very good way for spring, autumn, and then going into winter. I posted a photo of me wearing this jacket on Instagram, and some of you guys said that this is actually not on the website, so maybe they will bring it out again. I'm not sure what the deal is. If you like this vibe though, I feel like the whole Sassoon website is very similar in aesthetic, 
and maybe there is something else that you will like from the side. For the styling of this jacket, I wore it a lot with my white kind of tailored trousers. I also like with my taupe tailored trousers. So most trousers that are a bit more flowy, I think will go really well with this jacket. If you follow me for a while, you know how often I wear these white and other stories trousers. I wear them too much. Um, I would say three times a week maybe for the last year. And I just haven't really been able to find a replacement that even comes close. But as of soon, I saw these pants and I thought they were very similar silhouettes. I purchased them and I've actually gotten them shortened already at the tailor because they were a little bit long, which is why I didn't get a chance to wear them on the holiday. But I got about 4 inches, 10 centimeters or so taken off. And now they fit perfectly and I feel like these pants are definitely something I'm going to wear all the time because it's honestly the same silhouette as the white ones I own from End of the Stories. It's a flowy trouser that's not too structured, it's not too wide, so it feels very easy to wear. It comes with a high rise, which is super important, and it just feels like a very versatile item. It's in this blue colour that almost looks like denim from afar, but unlike a jean, this is so much more comfortable because it's that softer material. If you ask me for the perfect trouser that I recommend, it's always a trouser that is high rise, something with a very straight leg, um, not barrel, not tapered, just very, very straight, not too wide, and something where the material is a little bit softer, so there's some nice drape rather than looking too structured. When I have it on, it looks like a very simple pant, but it's been surprisingly hard to find, so Anytime I come across this style, I think I'm going to pick it up. I have the white, now I have the blue, and it's really just the most versatile pant. Like what I was saying before, I feel like French brands are very good at details. Even with the pockets on the inside, they've used this really gorgeous stripe pattern, and it just gives me the feeling that they make their clothes with the intention that it will be worn for a long time, rather than not paying attention to details and making it feel like a more seasonal piece that you'll wear out. Um, over you know a year or so. Even though this pen is not as exciting as some of the jackets, some of the more detailed items, it's a staple that I'm so excited to find because I can genuinely see myself wearing this like once a week um, because of how classic it feels. Time will tell, but um, you shall see. I will wear these all the time. The final piece is a jacket that my mom actually purchased. This is actually a French brand and she purchased it from Milan. Um, but it worked out pretty well because in Milan, they had a big sale on knitwear and she got a merino knit for about 30 euros. So it was a really good price for that knit. And then she also got this jacket. It's from the brand Comptoir de Contonier. At least that is my best attempt at pronouncing that. She was drawn to this jacket because it's very, very nice quality. So this jacket is made from 90% wool, 10% cashmere. It's not got the lining on the inside and it's double faced and it just feels very luxurious. This brand I wanted to share just because I felt like they did very good basics. Their pieces for me were not as exciting as Sir or Sassoon or Cezanne, but basics wise, I think they do a very good job. I feel like I will be borrowing this jacket from time to time because I don't really own any kind of grey jackets like this. It's such a comfortable piece. I'm sure my mum will get lots of wear from it, but when she's over it, um, I will happily take it any day. The very last item I'm sharing today are another pair of loafers and we've got some very classic black loafers here. These shoes are from Massimo Duty, which is not a Parisian or French brand. I believe it's actually a Spanish brand. Um, but we don't have them here in Sydney, so I took the chance to visit the store and I found these shoes. I've worn these shoes two or three times and similar to the Todd's loafers, I find these very comfortable. I feel like maybe they're not as comfortable as the Todd loafers because those are suede. And those are a little bit wider than this pair, but still so comfortable considering I wore them the first couple of times and no blisters. What I was originally drawn to was that the heel is very soft leather. It's not like a very hard leather that can give you blisters on the back. This is very soft, and I think a lot of the comfort comes down to the softer leather used. The other place I can often get blisters is basically where the leather kind of creases, and I'm happy to say no blisters here either. The shoe I would consider more of a medium width, not super super narrow, but it's also not wide, and despite that, I still find it to be quite a comfortable shoe. Square toe, I feel like, doesn't always create the most elongating look, but there is something about the slight taper and then the shape of the shoe 
that just looks very sleek and elongating on the foot. I think that if it didn't taper and it was super wide here, it would be quite unflattering, but the taper I think really helps make it feel a lot more elongating. If you're looking for a pair of high quality loafers, but you don't want to splurge on something like the Todd's, I feel like Massimo Duty actually does some very good shoes and I will be keeping an eye out for their shoes in the future as well. That was everything that I picked up in Paris or rather in Europe because I guess half the things were from Annecy or from Milan. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Sorry I missed the upload last week but I will be back with pretty much two videos a week for the next few weeks and I hope you guys enjoy seeing them. Have a wonderful couple of days and I'll see you soon. Bye!